Hello everyone. Today I wanted to show you a really interesting plant that I really love and it's a favorite with my children too because it's a very fun one. So these are Mimosa pudica. They've got lots of different names. Um, they're called shy plant or sensitive plant or even touch me not because they have a special mechanism inside them that if you do touch them, they close up tight. The leaves close up tight, sometimes the branches can even drop, they can just sort of hide in plain sight. It's like a sort of protective mechanism that allows them to hide from grazing cattle or anyone who wants to hurt them or pick them, I suppose, um, because if you can't see them, you can't pick them. So it's really clever. They're also very photophilic. It's like, it's like another plant I have right here too. This is my um, beautiful Oxalis triangularis. It's very photophilic too, which means that when it when night comes it closes up tight all the leaves close up tight and then in the morning when the sun comes out and the lights back up back again in the sky then they um open up again as they are now and so this is why these ones are called um butterfly plant too they look like little fluttering butterflies as they open and close in the light gorgeous but yes so just like them the mimosa pudica are also very photophilic too so at night you'll see them closed up tight um, it takes a lot out of them to close up all the time. So if you just do it like randomly, constantly, they actually get used to it. So they learn not to react. So um, they won't react as much when it's raining and stuff because that happens quite frequently if they're left outside. So I did sow all these, as I said, from seed. And I'll just show you the little video of how to do that because if you decide they're a fun plant, you'd like to, do, to grow them and, and have them, I think if you have children, they're a really good idea because other plants are really quite static, aren't they? These ones react to interaction. So they're really interactive, really, really fun. So yeah, if you do want to try growing them, there's a little tiny trick because what happens is the seed is really quite hard and it needs some help to crack. So I'll just show you the little video of how I did it quite a few months ago now. These ones have not grown as fast as they could. They didn't have the perfect environment. They were inside for a super long time. Then when it got warm, I put them outside and I didn't separate them as much as I could have. I find that each of these little um, plants are really quite spindly and they just grow you know, tall and you don't get much to them. So for example, in this part, I have three plants all together and it's it's quite full that way you can also make the plants themselves grow more by the like bush out a bit by of course top trimming them but i haven't had to do that i haven't had to prune it at all um but yeah you can see you know if it was just one plant it would just be this little stick bit right here so that little bit there so not a lot to them but um but they're lovely and as if you buy seeds you can just put a few in each pot as i did and then just Keep them there and then eventually you'll have to separate them a bit because they will get a bit pot bound and i do need to grow some of these on i want to give them as presents that's why i have this whole tray is not for me it's for presents for christmas and things maybe i don't know if people want plants for christmas um i know i would love plants for christmas certain plants on my list and then this guy i have here i just think he's so decorative i have him he actually has a bunch of compost just wrapped in a hessian sack i think he looks so cute like this he's really filling out his cage bless him and then this guy is also doing well in his own bigger pot. He's got just two plants in there. They're looking really nice. So let me just take you back to show you when I germinate these little guys. And you can see if in case you want to do it. The way to germinate these seeds is a little bit counterintuitive because you need boiling water or water just below the boil. So I've got my little thermometer here and you can see how hot it is. It's also steaming in here. So I think it's just about 170 Fahrenheit. Oh, let's see how much it is Celsius. Yeah, so just below the boil. And what I'm going to do is put the seeds inside this water. So here's a little close-up look of the seeds. They're really nice sized seeds. They're a bit like sesame seeds, just a bit larger than those. So easy to see anyhow. And they sank right to the bottom. So I'm going to soak them now for 48 hours. The reason I'm putting them in such hot water is because the shell of the seed is actually really hard and this will help make the shell a bit easier to germinate through, I suppose. I think usually the seeds are eaten by birds and then when they've been through the bird's digestive system, then they, they germinate easier. But this is another way to do it, I suppose. So in 48 hours, I'll hopefully have a look and hopefully we'll have some germination going on. 
So it's 48 hours later and I've got myself three pots of compost. This is quite, they're quite large pots. Usually I'd use smaller starter pots, but we're dealing with sensitive plants. They're also known as sensitive plants. And so I don't want to be moving them too much once they're germinating, once they're, once they're growing. So I'll put them in quite decent sized pots so they can just stay in there. Um, I've just removed the cling film from the cup that the little seeds were in. You can see they all sank to the bottom and they're looking nice down there. Let's get them out and get them into the pots. I've got a really very close up here of the seeds and it looks like there's a little bit of germination going on there. Look at that, little tiny beginnings. How amazing. So I'm going to put about four in each pot. They do say just to put like two or th two, I think three maybe in each pot or so, but I'm just doing four and it gives me a bit of extra just in case some of them don't some of them don't work out they're quite sticky which i think is quite good and now what i'm going to do is take a little bit of compost they want to be covered with really 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 thin layer of compost so it's just barely covered like i think it's like half an inch or something um so not a lot at all and then i'm going to give them a water and then just leave uh, cover them with cling film wrap them here in cling film it's going to help lock in the moisture after giving them a bit of a water. And I'm just going to leave them here on this windowsill. It's directly above a radiator, so it actually really provides lots of bottom heat. It's almost like a heating mat. It's perfect for this kind of thing. So I'll keep them here and we'll see how long it takes for them to start showing through, sprouting and germinating. Today is the 18th of December, so after just four days of being on my windowsill, something has happened. There are little tiny seedlings in each pot. I think I planted about five seeds in each pot and it looks like most of them, for sure, if not all of them, have germinated. Now, it's meant to take between two and three weeks for them to germinate, so doing it within four days is absolutely amazing. I'll just replace the cling film and put them back onto the windowsill. Yeah, and so once all danger of frost was over, I, as I said, put them outside. They were in an unheated greenhouse and also just on the patio. And they just had, you know, they were rained upon. They had as much sunshine. They are really sun lovers. They're quite tropical. And so when it got cold out there, I had to bring them all inside. And that's why I need to get rid of some of them now because they had too, far too many um, taking up lots of space. So, um, but there are, they are such fun things. And let me just demonstrate now how they work and why they're so fun. So as I said, they do get kind of immune to and learn to recognize certain movements. So I've just touched a few of them now. Let me just touch one so you can see it actually happen. Let's have a look. Let's find one that might not be too immune to my touch. Let's have a look here. Here's one. See how, how the leaves, how the, each individual little leaf it closes. It is quite fascinating to watch. And if you just brush against them sometimes, when they're extra sensitive, if you just tap them, then the whole thing just drops. Look, it's like they're really gutted and really sad, poor things. I hope you find them as fun as I do. Let me know what you think, and I'll see you next time.